About eight months ago, I made a video covering a survival shooter being created by a single developer. And that game was called Road to Vostok, and it impressed me a lot. The quality of the demo and the sheer willpower needed to take on such a challenging project by yourself was respectable to say the least. And today I am doubly impressed by this solo dev because they have switched away from the Unity engine which they were making the game on to the open source Godot engine and this move is not only impressive but it may become part of an industry-wide event toward making game development more open and inexpensive for indie devs. So let me shed a little bit of light on the project here. Road to Vostok again being developed by one person who I believe was a game design teacher before doing this or is still. And the general premise of the game is to be kind of a stalker slash Tarkov um, single player survival shooter. So essentially the stalker experience, but in more of a Tarkov aesthetic. Now he began working on it in the Unity engine and got a lot of publicity just for the quality and progress that he was making by himself. However, when Unity, not that long ago, announced their new charge per download dev tax fee, he made the decision to port his entire project over to the Godot engine, which... I would say for any team to port your game over to a different game engine is a huge amount of work, let alone for somebody working by themselves. Now, Godot is an open source, completely free to use game engine. It actually ended up getting a lot of press after the Unity disaster as indie devs were looking for alternative engines to work with. And Godot is probably one of the most well-known engines that is also completely free to use. That said, there doesn't seem to be much debate about it. Godot is just simply not as capable from a starting position compared to the other big engines like Unity and Unreal, but many devs are showing that it can be quite capable when given the proper attention. That said, I haven't yet really seen it used for really any FPS projects, or at least not ones that look like they're aiming for a realistic setting. So when I saw that there was a new demo available to download showcasing everything that was working before in Unity, now running in Godot, frankly, I had to try it out and was amazed by how well it ran. This is now a competent looking survival shooter running on a completely free game engine and it pretty much looks as good as it did before when it was running on Unity. All right, it's possible that some of the lighting is a little bit different or not quite as advanced as it was with the Unity engine, but I think that's also something that can be improved upon with time. It took this developer 615 hours to port this content over to Godot. And not only is it impressive that just through sheer willpower he did this, but he's also proving the capabilities of the Godot engine beyond what any projects had done before, at least in the FPS realm. And in my opinion, it could lead to this engine taking a similar path to, say, Blender. And to explain why this is such a big deal, and to me in particular, let me tell you a little story about software progress. When I was working as a 3D animator many, many moons ago, I used a program called 3D Studio Max, which is still around today. I also dabbled a bit in Maya as well. Now Autodesk, which owns most of the AutoCAD software and many 3D programs, owned 3D Studio Max and they later bought Maya, giving them kind of a stranglehold on a lot of the high-end 3D animation tools. And today the licensing fees for the software is fairly prohibitive for a lot of indie developers. Luckily though, there was a free 3D animation software alternative called Blender. However, back when I was first trying out Blender, it simply just wasn't as capable. It was cool, but when you put it side by side to the industry veterans, it just couldn't compete when it came to film and television level visual effects. And for me, this was around the Blender 2.4, 2.5 era. However, it's been quite a while since then, and Blender 4.0 launched last year in November, and it is still a completely free to use program, and it is incredibly impressive now. And honestly, it's become industry standard for most indie developers and is widely used in major studios as well. So when I say Godot could go down a similar path, that could be absolutely huge for the engine. With Unity showing just how 
poor management of the game engine can affect thousands of developers industry-wide, there's clearly a need for a free, no-strings-attached game engine that can do most of the same stuff that Unreal or Unity can do. And Vostok really seems like it could help show that the engine is capable of doing FPS content like the rest of them. Now, sadly, if you've been glued to the progress of Road to Vostok, well, unfortunately, it hasn't made a lot of forward progress in terms of new features and content, just because the developer has been spending the whole past 615 hours porting the game to Godot. But I am happy to say after loading up the demo, it runs smooth and the environmental showcase is very cool. Cool. What I like so much about this project is that the developer has been very open about his process, using it as almost an educational tool for other devs to follow. The demo showcases all the basic mechanics laid out and functional. The inventory system seems like it's all together and working, searching, looting, equipping wearables, and modding your guns. It's certainly competent, if not impressive. There's a detailed but familiar wound system with bleeding, broken bones, and various bandages to patch up your different injuries. The weapons also have multiple stances, which I know a lot of modern milsim gamers appreciate, but the game also isn't really flashy in any way. And in fact, I think that's kind of the point of this dilapidated environment. Now you can spawn AI into the world and they're pretty darn accurate and also hard to spot. I won't pretend like the gameplay is in any sort of fun state at the moment. The demo really is just a demo with some AI spawners and examples of the various mechanics, but I don't think really much work has been put into, say, gameplay tuning at this point. It's just really showing off the basic mechanics and laying out the building blocks to actually build the game. But I do like this. I really like following along with the progress because it shows a ton of forethought and preparation. And the design videos for this project show a huge amount of planning that went into it, and I hope that that ultimately leads to this developer being able to complete such an ambitious project project while working solo. And there's enough gamers out there that want to support this project and have been funding this dev's Patreon, which is awesome. I think it's allowing them to work on the project full time. And if you're interested in Road to Vostok, I'd say at the very least, you can go wishlisted on Steam and sort of keep your eyes peeled for more updates down the road. Let me know what you guys think about this project. I think Road to Vostok, regardless of whether or not it's a game that appeals to specifically what you want to do, is going to be an important game in development history. It could very well be one of the more important catalysts to legitimizing the Godot engine for all sorts of gaming. I'm very curious to see how it progresses down the road, and I'll be keeping you guys updated on any major changes with Road to Vostok. Up next, check out this video on Grey Zone Warfare, a very interesting new shooter from a company that's only made mobile games before, but this shooter looks honestly fantastic. Another game that seems to be taking a lot of cues from Tarkov. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave me a like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.